Have you encountered the term operationalization in the realm of empirical social research during a lecture or while reading a methods book? Maybe you've been assigned the task of operationalizing one or more variables for an assignment or research project. But you just don't know what on earth all these people are talking about. In this video, you will get the answer. And now, without further ado, welcome to Schreibe. The issue that these things seem so complicated often lies in the fact that many university instructors are so well acquainted with this term and others that they often struggle to empathize with beginners. They use terms like variables, concepts, constructs and operationalization without offering the fundamental knowledge that someone new to this type of work requires to understand how these things are interconnected. In this video, my goal is to clarify these terms and show you in the most straightforward language how they are related. We will also explore what operationalization entails and how you can put it into practice with regard to the variables of your own quantitative study. In the realm of empirical social research, we typically distinguish between the qualitative and the quantitative research paradigm. This division finds its origins in the philosophical underpinnings of social science, which I've explored in depth in my other tutorial on ontology, epistemology and methodology. Operationalization is an important task within the realm of quantitative social research. The quantitative paradigm is characterized by its goal of testing theoretical assumptions, mostly through the use of statistical methods. The bedrock of these statistical methods is grounded in quantitative empirical data, such as survey responses or the outcomes of experiments or sometimes digital trace data. The currency of the social sciences is theory. Social science theory relies on linguistic elements, even within the quantitative paradigm. In contrast, mathematicians and physicists build their theories with numbers and equations, reflecting the philosophical assumptions and nature of these disciplines. Social science theories require the use of concepts as foundational elements. These concepts serve as the vocabulary employed by researchers when describing existing theories or while building new ones. Qualitative researchers tend to be more at ease with this aspect of research, as they often enjoy crafting new concepts to enrich the theoretical landscape and to describe emerging social phenomena. On the other hand, quantitative researchers find the conceptual level less satisfying, often considering it too ambiguous. For instance, the concept of intelligence can have diverse interpretations, not everybody agrees on what intelligence is. In the context of quantitative research, however, concepts are then often transformed into constructs. Constructs are concepts made measurable. And this is what a quantitative researcher aims to do. The process of making concepts measurable is referred to as operationalization. And it introduces a new component, variables. A completed construct can encompass one or multiple variables, resulting in constructs that are then called unidimensional or multidimensional. An instance of a construct that can be determined by measuring just one single variable is weight. If we can measure weight in kilograms using a scale, then assessing the construct weight is relatively easy. However, many other constructs that researchers aim to measure are more complex. For instance, if we want to build a construct around intelligence, it cannot be assessed through a single variable. To make assertions about intelligence, researchers may consider variables such as abstract thinking, communication skills, learning, problem solving and more. During the operationalization of a multidimensional construct, researchers must decide which variables are relevant to the concept or construct in the end 
and which ones should be included in their study. Conversely, it is important to note that a single construct can be operationalized in various ways. For example, a study that solely employs the IQ variable to measure intelligence might face criticism because intelligence involves more than just the result of an IQ test. At the same time, even if a researcher picks a handful of variables to measure intelligence, another researcher might pick five different variables to do so. In the realm of quantitative research within the social sciences, researchers often rely on things called items or item batteries for data collection. These item batteries consist of pre-designed sets of questions that can be incorporated into a survey. For example, researchers can either create their own item batteries on our questions or utilize existing ones from the literature. If you are new to all of this, I would suggest the latter option. Many experienced researchers have already put in the effort to test and evaluate these item batteries. This also means that you can measure a single variable in different ways. For instance, if you intend to measure abstract thinking, there might be multiple item batteries or scoring systems provided by different authors to consider. In the process of operationalization, it is crucial to make well-informed selections and provide strong justifications for your choices. You must consider what different batteries cover and which measurement instruments are widely accepted within the research community. One indicator of this is the number of citations for the publication where the measurement instrument is made available. Additionally, the quality of operationalization can be assessed by examining the reliability and validity of the measurement instruments. If you'd like to delve deeper into this, take a look at my tutorial on reliability, validity and objectivity. Beyond item batteries for surveys, there are various other methods of operationalization. But the core principle remains the same, even if your method involves other types of data collection. In any case, it is essential to engage with the existing literature and determine how you can gain meaningful insights about the variables you are interested in. Now before we get to the last important part of the tutorial, please consider to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of this type of content. To complete this tutorial, we must address the following question. After identifying your measurement instruments and conducting your analyses, what comes next? In addition to the theoretical building blocks, which are your constructs, there are connections or relationships that hold them together. In quantitative research, the goal is not necessarily to discover new building blocks, but to provide insights about the relationships between them. Theoretical relationships are tested by identifying causal relationships, primarily based on experiments, or correlational relationships, for example, through surveys. These relationships are typically assessed for statistical significance. Theoretical assumptions guide what should be tested in the first place. These assumptions are derived from existing literature. In this context, propositions are assumptions about how concepts are related, while hypotheses are assumptions about how measurable variables or constructs are related. When formulating hypotheses at the start of your study, you are not only selecting the theoretical building blocks, for example, variable A and variable B, but you can also make predictions about their relationship. For example, variable A positively affects variable B. For more information on hypotheses, you can refer to my other tutorials on hypothesis development. If you now hopefully have a basic understanding of what operationalization means, this video has fulfilled its purpose. However, it's crucial to delve further into this. As the next step, I would recommend reading a methods book. A good starting point would be Discovering Statistics by Andy Field.